Hi guys! So today I thought I would do a video on sesame seeds and why I think that they're really healthy to incorporate into your diet while you're pregnant or if you are breastfeeding. Um, I'm going to skip my 29 week pregnancy update this week because I have nothing to add from last week so it just kind of seems senseless. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start off by saying that Obviously, everyone knows this, but I'm not a doctor, and the point in saying that is that not everything that I say is guaranteed to be correct. Um, if you know that I'm saying something that is absolutely incorrect, um, you know, comment down below and, you know, do us all a favor and let us know what is the correct way to say something, or, you know, just correct me. But try not to make me feel stupid, please. Um, but that being said, if you do find interest in what I'm saying, I would encourage you guys to do your own research on the topic to verify it. And you should do this with anything because, you know, don't take my word for it. Like, I did research this information, but I use the internet. And obviously the internet is not perfect as far as coming across information, but it did seem like... I was getting the same information from different websites, but a lot of times websites just copy each other anyway. Um, yeah, but, you know, do your own research so that you feel comfortable with the information and that you feel comfortable with the choices that you make for yourself. Like, don't just take everything that I say, you know, as the law or, you know, gospel or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's my interpretation of what I've read. And obviously, on top of that, it's how I understand what I read and then how I'm also regurgitating it. So, you know, there's a lot of room for error, but um, I do try my best to keep things as factual as possible. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically the reason I started researching into sesame seeds was because I noticed I was craving them quite a bit in my pregnancy. And I didn't even realize I was craving them at first because, and I've been eating them, I think, pretty much throughout most of my pregnancy. Um, just not in a noticeable way in the beginning, because in the beginning it would just be, you know, taking a spoonful of sesame seeds and sprinkling them on top of my rice or sprinkling them on top of my vegetables. Um, obviously, I have Asian in my blood, so that's just something that, you know, is kind of normal to me. But um, that turned into, like, wanting to throw gomazio, which is sesame seeds that are roasted and mixed in with a little bit of mixed in mixed with a little bit of salt because it's supposed to help increase the uptake of the minerals in sesame seeds um and i started sprinkling that on like everything and that became a little bit more obvious that it was kind of a craving and then there was tahini that got introduced well i've always liked tahini but i think suddenly i just wanted a little bit more where um you know you make salad dressings or just even like a little dressing that you can put with um, any type of grains or anything. Um, and hummus, the ever popular hummus. Um, and all of these things are sesame seed based. So I started looking into sesame seeds and basically it seems like to me that it's a perfect food for pregnancy. Like, and that you should try to incorporate them into your diet. Like if you have any of these um, concerns about your minerals or anything in pregnancy. So to start off with, I wrote this down because basically these are the kinds of things that I would get wrong. Um, the st mineral statistics or stats on um, sesame seeds. So what basically what I did was I based my, um, my numbers are all based on a quarter of a cup because that's how much I've been using to make sesame seed milk, which P.S. I'm going to have a recipe at the end for how I make sesame seed milk. Um, it's really easy to make. And um, basically after reading into all the benefits of sesame seeds, I wanted to increase how much, uh, like the quantity of sesame seeds I was eating. Because just sprinkling sesame seeds or having like tahini or something, I wasn't eating a lot of actual sesame seeds that way. Whereas with sesame seed milk, I could have a quarter of a cup's worth of sesame seeds in one serving. So all of these numbers that I'm about to do are based off of a quarter of a cup. And I got these by plugging it into chronometer, which is, I think, in my opinion, is a very reliable source. 
So it's a quarter of a cup of unhulled sesame seeds as well. And they contain 206 calories, which is not bad because it makes a big glass of milk. Um, it is high in fat. It's 18 grams of fat, but this is coming from omega-3s and omega-6s, and this is going to be really good for your baby's brain development, um, you know, which is really important during, especially going into your second and third trimester. Um, and, you know, it's also the baby right now. I'm in my third trimester. I just started my third trimester. So the baby's also putting on a lot of fat. So you want it to be putting on healthy fats, don't you? Um, it has six and a half grams of protein. And the interesting thing is, is the protein and the sesame seed is coming from all of the 11 amino acids that Chronometer lists on their website. And 51% of the daily value of tryptophan is in a quarter of a cup of sesame seeds, which is one of the amino acids. But um, just thought that was nice to know because a lot of pregnant women have a hard time sleeping. So if you're one of those pregnant women that's having a hard time sleeping, you know, a little bit of tryptophan might rock you to bed. <laughs> you never know. Um, so I'm gonna skip over now to the mineral content and in particular, calcium, iron, and magnesium, because these are three that pregnant women specifically tend to be interested in. But I will say that across the board, sesame seed has really good mineral content with the exception of um, potassium, which was like something like 4% of your daily value in the quarter of a cup and sodium, which was at zero. But um, I mean, personally, I'm not worried about potassium because I eat a ton of bananas every day. Not a ton, but you know, um, obviously I'm fruit based and you know, I could eat anywhere from five to 10 bananas a day. And I know for a fruit based person that could actually be on the low end of banana intake, but regardless, potassium is not a worry of mine. Um, and sodium is rarely ever a worry for anybody, isn't it? I mean, most of us, sodium's not an issue. So anyway, um, going back to the minerals it does have, Calcium, it has 35% of your daily value of calcium in a quarter of a cup, 29% of your daily value of iron, and 39% of the daily value of magnesium, um, which magnesium I was like really impressed with because obviously I was getting those cramps in my legs and that could be calcium, magnesium, or potassium. Like I said, I get tons of potassium, but um in my mind, it seemed like it was magnesium based. And then I started doing the magnesium oil, like on the actual muscle that was getting the cramp, um, the Charlie horse, and it was making it feel better. And actually after I'd been drinking the sesame seed milk for a few days, my leg, like completely, like I only ever had one really bad cramp, but in the mornings I would kind of feel like if I moved my leg wrong, that I was going to get a cramp. And that's completely gone. Like I can stretch my legs out in the morning like normal now and no problems. Um, do I know if it was from that? No, absolutely not. Like I don't know if it was fixed from the magnesium in this sesame milk or it could be something completely different. But interesting to say. Obviously things like calcium um, and all the other minerals in there as well will help your baby's bones to develop, which is really important, especially right now where I am in the third trimester. So it's really interesting that I started craving a lot of um, like, I mean, like it went from like just wanting little bits of sesame seeds to like suddenly I was craving like a lot of it. So it's funny that I was craving a lot of it right around the time that my baby's bones were starting to develop a lot more. Um, it's really interesting if you actually know how to listen to what your body's craving for, because it's hard to listen to your body, but if you're listening to it correctly, the signs can be really just really cool. Um, yeah, but um, the interesting thing for pregnancy is that the mineral content across the board in sesame seeds, they're linked to preventing things like high blood pressure um, and in controlling your blood sugars. And I find this interesting because, I mean, if you're pregnant, you know that two of the things that you get tested for constantly throughout your pregnancy is your blood sugars and your, um, they'll test your urine for protein, which is a indicator of preeclampsia, which is 
um, high blood pressure in pregnancy. So basically, we've got gestational diabetes and preeclampsia, which are forms of diabetes and high blood pressure that exist only in pregnancy and then go away after pregnancy. Um, and here's something with like a perfect mineral content to help prevent these things. And to me, it's like, well, you know, it's not going to guarantee that you don't have these problems, but if it puts things into your favor and you enjoy, well, I enjoy eating them. So if you enjoy eating them, why wouldn't you do it? Um, you know what I mean? Like just seems like a simple no brainer. And then I just wanted to add in quickly at the end about breastfeeding because it's also a lactogenic food, which I'd heard of like, obviously there's lots of lactogenic foods out there, mostly herbs. Um, but I, I never actually knew that sesame seeds were a lactogenic food as well. Um, I like some of the more common ones would be like turmeric and like fennel, fenugreek, um, oats. Like those are all really common. Like more, most people, lactogenic means that it um, supports your body in making breast milk. Sorry, I didn't say that in the beginning in case you didn't know. And um, yeah, sesame seeds, sorry, excuse me. I'm pregnant, I have no shame. I had no shame before I was pregnant. I just realized I kind of did like a burpee thing and then I just kept talking as if it didn't happen. <laughs> anyway, to get back on track, um, yeah, sesame seeds support milk production. Um, so if you're having a hard time producing enough milk, why not try making this milk that I'm going to show you guys at the end how to make and try drinking that for a few days and see if it helps or look up the list of other lactogenic. You can go online and just look up, you know, lactogenic foods and it'll come up with like lists of different lactogenic foods and you can try different ones because different ones will work for different people. It's not guaranteed that they'll work, but um, yeah, you can try those to increase your milk supply. That being said, if you've already got an adequate supply, do not <laughs> go out of your way to um, eat lactogenic foods. Like there's absolutely no reason to incorporate like massive amounts of um, any of these foods that would increase your milk supply if you've already got an active, adequate supply because you do not want to produce too much milk because this will, um, you know, this will cause things like engorgement, mastitis, clogged ducts. Um, it can give your baby, um, if your letdown is too strong, basically if you're producing too much milk in, at one time and like the milk is just coming out really quickly, the baby will have a hard time drinking it down fast enough. So it can have, um, it can learn poor sucking techniques and um, baby can get really gassy. Uh, baby's more likely to throw up the milk. So even though you're producing more milk, it's not actually benefiting your baby. Give your baby colic. So only drink this during breastfeeding if you're having a hard time producing enough milk. Or I would say it's okay to like have lactogenic foods, but don't, you know, if you have an adequate supply, it's still okay to have these foods, but just don't go out of your way to like have them all the time. Like specifically to increase your supply because you only want to increase your supply if you need to. That's basically it. I'm just saying like, don't get carried away. That's all. Um, so I'm going to cut in the clip of my little recipe demo thingy that I taped the other day. And that's it. I'm going to say, oh, I'll show you my 29 week belly bump because why not? Since I'm skipping my 29 week update, I might as well show you my bump just because I love my bump, I really do. So why wouldn't I want to show it off? It's gonna be hard for me to stand up. <laughs> so this is the 29 week bump. And baby's head is definitely still down. And it's pretty much stayed that way. I feel like it's been down for a couple weeks and I hope it stays that way. <laughs> All right. Bye guys, I'm gonna add on the recipe and I will see you in my next video. Thank you, let me know if you guys have any requests. Okay, thanks, bye. To make sesame seed milk, I just start out with, um, this was a quarter cup of unhulled raw sesame seeds that I've 
soaked in water overnight and sometimes I do this overnight sometimes I just do it for an hour or two it really just depends on if I'm in the mood for the milk and if I have um, basically if I've pre-planned and I've been good I have it from the night before or other times you know I just decide I want it and I just wait an hour or two so it's not such a big deal if you don't do it overnight and um, I just give it a good rinse Some fresh water just to make sure that um, I don't know any nasty things just the idea of using the seeds without rinsing them seems really gross to me I'm sure there's a better reason for actually rinsing it but just rinse it it's cleaner and then that goes into the blender and I will say you probably need a high power blender. Whack, whack, whack. <laughs> you probably actually need a high power blender to do this. So, ta da! Okay, and to this I'm adding 500 mils of water. Um, 500 milliliters of water is also half a liter or a little bit more than two cups. So, um, it's not science though. So, you can just kind of go to your own taste and where is my lid? Hold on one second. I got to find my found it. I had it drying on the side. So get that on nice and tight and make sure your blender is on the lowest setting and then turn it on and then slowly work it up to the highest setting and let it go for, hmm, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute. Just make sure that it's really fully mixed up. So bring it down slowly and I got my nut milk bag here ready in a container. So I just got to pour this in. And I'm just going to wring this out so not too hard so I finished wringing it out and basically I'm just left with a very small amount of fiber in the bag and I've got my milk and it's delicious you can drink it just like this as is or if you want at this point, you can put this back into the blender and you can either blend it with, um, you know, one or two medjool dates to taste. You can blend it with um, a ripe banana to sweeten it up. You could blend it with, you could add a little vanilla, you could add cinnamon, whatever you like basically to make it suit your taste. Um, personally, I like drinking it just like this. And weirdly... Maybe not the first time I drank it. The first time I drank it, I wasn't as into it. But over time, it's scary how much it reminds me of milk. It almost, it almost is a turnoff, but it's not because I keep craving it. Um, not because it tastes like milk. I crave it for all of the amazing mineral content inside of it. And my body really does, like, I enjoy it more, more and more every time I drink it. So, Enjoy! I had banana ice cream for breakfast, so I don't need you, Mr. Ice Cream Man.